About 6,000 students are getting ready to have this cough that I have, probably. I think I infected them all out there a second ago, so I <laughs> apologize to the students. Um, man, it was a great way for our program. Really proud of our players. Um, whew, that was, uh, was a heck of a win. You know, our guys hung in there. We made every mistake that we could make uh, humanly possible in the first half. And the guys just kind of kept hanging in there battling and really thought we had a good mentality at halftime. Didn't really get a sense that anybody had panicked or anything. And you know, we just came out defensively in the second half and just played lights out. Um, we just get the stops that we had to, uh, defensively when we needed to. You know, they kept extending the lead. We couldn't get it down to a, under a two-score game for a while. And then, man, just the defense really just took over. And thought those guys played exceptional down the stretch. Thought uh, Max Duggan continues to, you know, play as good a football as any quarterback I've ever been around. I mean, he just, you know, he just does everything that he can to help your football team win. You know, he had to run the ball a bunch tonight. He got hit a bunch. Um, he's just a tough guy, you know, and I'm so proud of him. Um, just a fun, fun win. I'm happy for our student body and our, and our fans. And, um, yeah, but mostly, like I said, our players. I thought that, uh, thought those guys showed great resolve by just, you know, playing hard and kind of rolling the sleeves up and going to work in the second half and figuring out a way to win the game. At the end of regulation, was there a chance that Max wasn't going to play? Because Chandler looked like he was getting ready. Yeah, I mean, uh, Max got a little dinged, but I don't think there was ever, I don't think he got real far down the line. I mean, I think Max was going to play no matter what, you know. <laughs> I think he kind of felt like that, you know, that's what he wanted to do. And I think it was, he just, I think it was his arm that got banged up a little bit. Um, so, you know, um, again, I can't give him a ton of credit. I mean, he just made a bunch of big plays, took care of the ball again like he has been. This season and just really played well. It seemed like it seemed like Oklahoma State made a real concerted effort, both offensively and defensively, to keep your offense off the field. Did you get that sense? Yeah, yeah, they had a good plan. I thought coming in. I mean, I thought they, you know, really got us off balance early in the game. You know, I thought their offense did got our defense a little bit out of sorts. They ran you know, a couple of trick plays, and caught us on some stuff early, and rattled us probably a little bit, but once we settled in, I thought we played great defense. I mean, you look at it, it was 14-0 right, right out of the shoot, and then, you know, gave up nine more points the rest of the game. So, again, I thought we played exceptional defense against a very good Oklahoma State offense. I mean, Spencer, Spencer Sanders is a hell of a quarterback, and, um, you know, uh, we were going to have to get those stops to have a chance to get back in the game, and that's why they were so big. Another in high time. Another, another huge day by, by, by Quinn. Is it, is it safe to kind of say you guys have pretty much unlocked and found a really good role for him now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Quentin's, you know, I mean, I think, again, he and Max just believe in each other and trust each other and are on the same page. I think that's the, the biggest thing. I mean, you know, we call plays sometimes with the, with the intent for the ball to go to someone else, and, and Max throws it to Quentin, you know, and those two guys are just on the, on the same play, uh, same page and thinking the same way and seeing things the same way. So. You know, I think he trust Quentin too to, if he wants to take a shot, throw it up and let, let Quentin go battle for it. And we didn't really catch any of those kind of throws today, um, other than that long post early. But but I thought he was very workmanlike. He just does such a great job, you know, attacking after he catches the ball. I think I think people really probably overlook that part of Quentin's game, just how good he is after the catch. And I think it showed up today. You need that multiple scores to really even going into halftime. What do you tell your players when you went into the locker room? Well, the big thing was we felt like we played about as bad as we could in the first half, and it was still a two-score game. You know, I just thought we just made a lot of mistakes. I mean, you know, Didi fumbles a punt. I've never seen him do that. I've never seen him drop one in practice. Um, it's a left-footed punter, you know, and, and that's a weird ball coming off a left-footer's uh, foot. And we tried to simulate it this week with our with our judge machine, but it just wasn't the same. Kind of Aussie punted it, and um, just you know, it's, it's a hard punt to catch. And and um, so we, we did that, which again is very uncharacteristic. After that fumble punt, how big was that to hold in to a field big. goal? Yeah, that was big. Yeah, to get a stop there, I thought was huge because the, the thing could have gotten out of control at that point. You know, I think Oklahoma State had the momentum, and we had to get two or three stops defensively to give us a chance to win in critical situations. And I think that was certainly one of them because, uh, like I said, they you know, we were out of sorts, and so we needed to try to keep the game as close as we could. And I thought, you know. 
getting that touchdown at the end of the half, I thought was big. Um, and then, you know, being able to, you know, to, to, to stop them when we needed to down the stretch, I thought was really critical. So the touchdown and the regulation uh, with Mass, is that a special kind of play for that scenario or red zone? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's something we run quite a bit in red zone on the goal line. Um, you know, at that point in the game, you just kind of want to put the put the ball in, in people's hands that you trust. You know, and, and Kendra and Max were going to be the guys down the stretch that were going to win it for us. And I, let me just say this: I mean, I thought our offensive line played as good as I've seen an offensive line play in a long time. And we ran the football really well today. Um, you know, I, Kendra was 112 yards. I think we ended up netting 104. Um, you know, I mean, they were tough yards, but I thought our guys blocked them incredibly well. They played very physical. You know, to me, that was the thing we talked a little bit about in overtime was do we want to go for two, or excuse me, in regulation? Do we want to go for two at the end of regulation? Do we want to just kick it? You know, we scored with too much time left really to go for two, but, you know, we felt like as long as the game got extended, that was good for us. So I felt like we had the momentum. felt like we were really playing physical up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. So as long as the game continued, we felt like we had an opportunity to win. Coach, a couple weeks ago, you were in tears a little bit over Max Duggan. Yeah. What does he meant to this team and the others? Well, I think he's kind of symbolic a little bit of this football team. You know, I think he's, um, we're kind of a team of, of, you know, overachievers, I think, in some ways. You know, I think just looking at, at you know, kind of where we were projected and where we were picked and all this, and, and it's still early. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're three games in our conference schedule, I mean, nine game conference schedule. So we're, third of the way in. Um, but, you know, we've won some big games. Some guys have played really, really hard. Um, and I think the bottom line is, I think the guys love each other and trust each other and really don't want to let each other down. You know, and I think that's, when you have a football team that cares that way, it just makes everybody around them better. I mean, it makes the scout team guys perform better on Tuesday and Wednesday. It makes the, the guys in the weight room want to work harder. I mean, it just raises the level of commitment and, and care we really are invested in people like these guys are each other and so it's um it's just a fun group to be around they love playing football they really they really enjoy playing for each other and you know and i think the thing that we're learning is just look we've got to get the good enough players where we can just play and, and not pay attention to the score whether we're behind or ahead just focus on playing the next play you know that, that we have a chance to, to win some tough hard-fought games which we really have last couple of weeks you really explain kind of the substitution rule. It looks like you were fired up. A yeah, I got mad. I got better than I should have about it. But, um, you know, it's, it's supposed to happen a little faster. I'll just say that. And, and so, anyway, I thought the officials, you know, I thought Oklahoma State did a good job of exploiting the way it was being called in the first half. And I thought the officials did exactly what they were supposed to do. They corrected it. And we got, we got over it and moved on. You know, this is the fourth week in a row. This is the fourth week in a row where you guys have obviously had a big game. You know, SMU, and yeah. then followed by Kansas, and then followed by you know playing Oklahoma at home. I, I mean, and then you go down fourteen zero. Where does it kind of come from to not let that get out of hand? Yeah, yeah. You know, what's weird is is I thought for the first time this season I thought we were a little tight tonight. You know, I thought we were in the first half against Colorado, and I thought we played a little tight tonight. You know, and, and I don't know. Maybe that's maybe they picked that up for me. I tried not to. You know, to, to give them any kind of reason to, to think of this any differently. But, you know, it just seemed like we played a little bit to not make mistakes in the first half instead of playing free. And I think that's what makes us, makes these guys good is they, you know, they play free. They, um, you know, we try to allow them to play fast. We don't want them to think too much. You know, we've got, we've got good team speed. We want to be able to play to our strengths and, and let the guys go play football without having to overanalyze too much. Um, you know, it's a, uh, it's like I said. It's a, it's a fun team to be around, and I love the way the guys the guy the way the guys work. But I did get that sense early that we were probably a little tight. We'll talk about the impact that Brother Clark made in his. I mean, time, like, especially at the end of the game. What type of impact that you got, does it make for you guys on defense? Well, I think it gives us confidence. You know, I, I do because that's a very good offensive football team. You know, they got a great scheme. They got a fantastic quarterback. Uh, they're always good up front, physical and. <laughs> do a good job running the ball. And to me, I thought that was the biggest part. I mean, you know, you could just see as the game went on, you know, we started to win the line of scrimmage more defensively. I thought that was really big. Um, started to pressure the quarterback more, you know, and 
the thing that we did, and we've done it at times this year, is play complementary football. You know, when the, the offense kind of hit their rhythm, that's when the defense really started to play well, and then the offense fed off of that, and I think they fed off of each other. And, um, you know, when we play good, we're a pretty good football team, and when we don't, you know, we're pretty average. And so that's going to be important for us to, to learn that, understand it, and get better and keep improving. I read today that there were, uh, this is the second time in college football history that there were three games between two, two five zones. Yeah. <coughs> a lot of eyes were on the Alabama game today and the Michigan Penn State game. I'm wondering for you guys here to be one of those teams in that game, to win that game, to be undefeated going into the end of October, you know, so early in your, in your yeah. career. What does that mean? I mean, it's, it's like I said, it means we got a bunch of good players. I mean, it really does. It means that, that the guys are doing what we ask them to do and they're, and they're, they got, they're talented guys. Um, you know how this stuff goes. I mean, you know, we talked about this this way of, of climbing up the ladder, you know, as you have success, then more is expected of you. And you gotta be able to carry that load, you know, and and felt like it was a little bit of a hard load for us to carry early. Felt like we played a little tight, as I said. And um, but you know, once we decided, hey look, we're just gonna relax and play, then then we've got to, you know, then we played well. It's gonna be important on us to, to just emphasize like this is a one week at a time, what have you done for me lately business. And um, you know Historically, our teams have gotten off to good starts and not finished very well, and so it's going to be a challenge for us to, to finish down the stretch. We know that. And this is a different team. It doesn't matter what happened in the past here or where I've been. It's going to be a different. We're going to write a different story. And but you know, our guys know that. You know, you just got to play well in this league. If you can't have any letdown, if you don't, you're going to get beat. And you know, I just loved our effort and, and uh, competitiveness today. Thought we showed a great spirit and just kept battling. Coach Last week, of course, Quentin Johnson catches the game-winning catch. This week, a bunch of big catches on your game-tying drive. Uh, what what kind of prepares him for this moment? What makes him so good in those moments? Yeah, he's just a, he's a really talented young man that works incredibly hard um, and really has a burning desire to be a great player. You know, he's not a Quentin's not a Instagram guy, and you know what I mean. I mean, he's not a big social media guy. He just likes to play football, and. Uh, you know, he, he's very competitive, he works very hard. Uh, he's been blessed with a lot of talent. And he knows that and understands it and, and honors it by working hard and doing what he's supposed to do. And so when you have young people that have had, are built that way, it's pretty special. Uh, those are just, you know, they're fun guys to be around. And, and uh, you know, wish I had a whole lot more time with Clint. But I'm, I'm afraid I'll be watching him on Sundays next year. You've won some big games already too, but does that whole those things seem new? Walking off, hugging Jeremiah, everyone. How does that have to be part yeah, of that? Yeah, I mean, it's, look, it's cool to be part of that. You, you know, yeah, if you, you grow up your whole life, you can see that stuff. And, um, you, you know, you go, maybe someday I'd like to be a part of something like that. And so it's it's fun. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great win for our program and for our players. And it's like anything else. I mean, it's a, just gradual steps. We just want to keep building. And, you know, our, our reward for winning this game is we get to play Kansas State here off the bye. So congratulations. <laughs> you know, um, so that's you know that's the way it goes in the life in the Big Twelve. But guys will have a good time tonight, and the coaches will try to have a good time, and then we'll get back in the morning. Coach, it's early, but this is the same group of guys basically as last year. You make some additions. The biggest change is you and your staff. Is that the biggest reason why this team is six zero? What do you guys? Oh, I don't know. Like I said, I mean, if we didn't have any good players, we'd be we wouldn't be six zero. I promise you. Um, it starts with those guys, and, and again, it's really has been their approach, honestly, more than anything else. You know, they just have done what we asked them to do. And they've trusted us all every step of the way. And, um, you know, some of the stuff is different than they've done in the past. And they just believe that we were leading them down the right path. And again, I've done this four times where you go take over a program and these guys buy in fast. You know, and that's not always the way it is. Sometimes it takes a while and, and you know, goes back to what I said earlier, this football team loves to play football. They like to practice, they like to play, they like to compete. Um, you know, guys in the locker room right now, I mean, they were already excited about you know, having a chance to play next Saturday. I heard them talking more about that than I did anything else. And so that's the kind of team, you know, that, that these guys are, and it's a blast when you get, get to be around them every day. Uh, TC had lost 20 straight games when they were trailing by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. You're playing an Oklahoma State team that wins a lot of times and knows yeah. how to win. Yeah. How, what is that like? How do you teach a team how to win? Well, I think the biggest thing is you just, you know, kind of goes back to what I said earlier. You got to, you have to have some kind of confidence in yourself to be able to do that. 
You know what I mean? Because, you know, you got to believe, you know what, we can really come back. And, and collectively, it, it has to happen. It really has to happen individually. Those players have to make a decision. Like, can we do this? And the only way that they can believe that they can is by having confidence. And the only way you can have confidence is by earning it, by working, preparing, um, knowing that you're ready uh, to take on anything. And these guys have done that. And, and so when we got down and things weren't going our way, I think we just really, truly kept our head down and believed, look, if we'll just you know, do our job and play hard, good things will happen in the second half. And like I said, I thought our defense played lights out and we strung together some huge drives on offense and we're able to get a win. Well, there's a few more questions. How's it feel to be bowl eligible? <laughs> yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, it's good, man. I mean, it's, you know, I like it. It feels, feels better not being bowl eligible. <laughs> Can you say about Bud? Oh. Yeah, Bud. Yeah, man. Um, good to get Bud back. I mean, Bud's made some big plays today. You know, he's a guy that um, has been banged up, and and we kind of been waiting for him to get back healthy. He so uh, loves to play. One of those one of those players that uh, has a spirit about him. Just competes hard. Loves to play. Um, you know, has a knack for the football. He's he he really has great instincts. Knows where the ball is going to be thrown, and really breaks well on the ball. And, I, mean, I see him all the time in practice. Get, you know, he intercepts passes all the time. He anticipates throws. He, he just understands football. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.